want to get going and so that our our guests can keep their busy schedules throughout the day. I am Tim Ritchie. I'm the president of the Museum of Science, and it is a real pleasure to welcome you here today for what must be the major legislation of the year to be signed here uh, as we recognize our state dinosaur, the Podokosaurus holy Holiocensis, uh, and it's a great story behind it that I'm not going to tell because the person who helped create this, Representative Jack Lewis, will tell that story. But it is a story about science, and it is a story about this administration and about STEM week. You know, what is the common language of humanity? What is it that kind of pulls us together? Uh, we speak many different languages, but we share one planet, we share one history, we share one future. In fact, we live in a universe where everything that is always has been. It's remarkable, breathless, bottomless in its beauty to think of that, that as old as the universe is and as expansive as it is, it's all connected. So even this little theropod, we're connected to that theropod and we're connected to each other. And that's why when the Commonwealth of Massachusetts sets aside an entire week for STEM week, science, technology, engineering, math. It's about problem solving, but it's also about helping everyone find a place in a world that's driven by science, technology, engineering, and math. So the theme, see yourself in STEM, that's a real thing. And that has come largely because of the leadership of this administration, Governor Baker and Lieutenant Governor Polito. About the Museum of Science, we kind of exist as this common place, a place where the general public can meet industry, academia, and uh, government, and to think, what kind of world do we want? What is my place in it? And it's an exciting place. It's a, it's a, we live in a universe that's abundant with the answers that we seek. And so it's a real pleasure to think, OK, this thing, this naming of this dinosaur, that pulled people together. And when you hear the story, you'll see, you'll see it all there. You may not see industry, maybe, but you'll see academia. You'll see uh, government, and you'll see the general public coming together and saying, you know, we want to have a state dinosaur, and this pulls us together, whatever is separating us. Well, I don't think I'm going to go through Governor Baker's resume, except to say he is a friend of science. He's a friend of learning. He's a believer in the future. He's had a great run, and I am pleased to introduce our governor, Charlie Baker. Thanks very much, and, and thank you all for coming today. And, and honestly, you did such a fabulous job of putting this signing ceremony into the contours of this week. I'm not really sure what I can add, except to say that um, I think it's really good that our lizard is very fast, <laughs> because that one is very big. And I think one of the things um, that's particularly important about this, in addition to the story that Representative Lewis will tell, um, is if I think about my own childhood, and uh, truth be told, I'm an English major. I was always better at that than I was in anything else. But, um, but the thing that got me interested in science in the first place was dinosaurs. And and the main reason they got me interested is because of their majesty and their ferocity and, um, and their almost alien being status. As a kid, they just created wonder. And, um, and that got me into the whole conversation, and I'm sure a lot of other kids, about, well, where did they come from? And when you get into a conversation about where they came from, you are heading into a big, long discussion about history and science and evolution and a whole bunch of other things that um, become the foundational platform on which many of us learn. And, um, and I remember working on projects when I was in elementary school about dinosaurs and trying to find exactly the right words to bring to life the points I was trying to make about 
dinosaurs and what they meant to me. And honestly, um, Engl majoring in English is about what? It's about communicating ideas and about trying to deliver a message and trying to figure out a way to deliver that message in a way that people will understand it and appreciate it and, um, and hopefully look, learn something from it. And I would give dinosaurs, for me as a kid, a big part of what got me interested in so many other things. And, um, and I do want to give the kids who were fascinated with dinosaurs uh, a lot of credit for uh, making this day possible and working with Representative Lewis and other folks in the legislature to give a tough, spunky underdog from Holyoke um, the opportunity to be um, the dinosaur here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And, and the fact that we're doing this all in STEM week is 100% appropriate and that gives me a chance to introduce the creator, inventor, and, um, and owner of STEM week here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito. Thank you for that very generous introduction. Yes, I am one that plays actively in the STEM space with a whole lot of incredible partners all across our Commonwealth. Uh, so let me just start by saying uh, thank you to one of our incredible partners, which is the Museum of Science and Tim Ritchie. Uh, your leadership team has been absolutely incredible over these last eight years, and you as a newer comer to the team, when I met you the day before we closed the Commonwealth due to COVID, you didn't miss a beat. You didn't miss a beat making sure that you have an exhibit here to mark that moment in our history and embracing science uh, as you all do here every day is STEM Day at the Museum of Science. But the Museum of Science is one of many partners all across the Commonwealth that we are working with this week to be intentional to spotlight and shine the light on what STEM education and opportunities look like here in Massachusetts. So having this signing ceremony is perfect for us to celebrate uh, what is happening in our classrooms and having this program today, which I understand is being followed by many at home, over 6,000 students across our Commonwealth were part of this experience to advocate for the passage of, of legislation into law here in Massachusetts. So congratulations to all of you students for being active and engaged in this process and to see the final result today with Governor Baker signing it. Uh, into law forever here in Massachusetts. So a uh, couple of things, uh, STEM is fun. And that fun begins for many students and families uh, soon after birth when they're all looking for something to do uh, with their newborns and toddlers. And oftentimes every family will find their way here to this museum to just rediscover themselves as adults, but also to open up that discovery and excitement in their children. And so it's important not to have just a one day event in that child's life, but to build on that desire to want to learn more and that curiosity that comes with seeing amazing things like this. And so we've been intentional in Massachusetts to turn our classrooms along with our educators and leaders in our school districts into learning labs and investing in equipment and the kinds of state-of-the-art things like CDC, CNC machines and 3D printers and lab scopes into the classroom. So kids can have fun exploring and discovering and not being afraid uh, to try uh, different things out. So that's really what we're focusing on, STEM education in our classroom. And then as they get a little older, reinforcing, especially among girls and kids of color, that this is important for their future, and that yes, they should be able to see themselves in careers, in courses, in places where they can continue to learn more and not sidestep out of what could be considered in their minds something that they don't belong in. So we're very intentional about see yourself in STEM for everyone across this commonwealth. And so we've created these innovation career pathways where kids can really use their high school experience intentionally around connecting to advanced manufacturing or a life science career, for example. And then breaking down those barriers so that students can afford 
uh, to go on to advance learning by getting access to credits in co for college credit in high school for free and then build on that to a credential or a certificate that is highly needed and valued by employers throughout the Commonwealth and then maybe build on that and go on to associate degrees, college degrees, uh, and then PhD if, if needed. But we need it all in Massachusetts. So STEM is fun, STEM is important, STEM is empowering, and it gives kids and adults in our Commonwealth opportunities to access education and programs so that they can see themselves in the much needed workforce that really fuels our innovation economy in Massachusetts. Nearly half of our workforce is connected to a STEM field. That's today. That is only going to continue to increase as time goes on. So what we're doing is necessary. So finally, I just want to say a thank you uh, for not only just marking this week with uh, enthusiasm, but understanding the importance of it in our classrooms and the connections that we're making for students into workplaces all across our Commonwealth. And uh, it's great to be here with our colleagues in the legislature and to mark this moment where a woman uh, was the pioneer and discoverer of this fossil in Holyoke uh, back in 1910, uh, Professor Talbot. So I know that uh, Mount Holyoke uh, and the Holyokers here today are, are very proud uh, of this uh, milestone and achievement. So with that, I'm now going to turn it over to Representative Lewis. Good morning. It is so great to be with all of you. Uh, and if any of us ever doubted the power of science and the power of STEM or the love of, nearly universal love of dinosaurs, all you need to do is look around the room today and remember not only everyone who's in this space right now, but the 35,000 people across our Commonwealth who participated in this project over the last couple of years. I want to thank the governor and lieutenant governor for taking time out of their busy, busy schedules to celebrate this with all of us. This is a project that engaged youth from all across the Commonwealth to be engaged and to learn more about dinosaurs, prehistoric Massachusetts, Mignon Talbot, and it just seemed most appropriate not to go to my district and talk to just one classroom, but to again put ourselves in a place where classrooms come every single day to learn about dinosaurs and to be inspired. Uh, no legislation is passed in isolation, no matter how great or dino-focused it might be. Uh, I want to thank the speaker and Senate president and all of my colleagues for supporting this bill over the years. Uh, actually, just two years, it was on the fast track from the beginning, uh, swift-footed like our, our little dinosaur here. Uh, but we have a couple colleagues I want to thank in particular. There we go. Um, Rep. Dan Carey, thank you so much for being a partner in this work. Uh, Rep. Pat Duffy, thank you as well. Kathy Lenatra, thank you so much for being here too. Uh, on the Senate side, Senator Joe Comerford uh, was the architect of this bill on the Senate piece, on the Senate side, uh, wishes she could be here. And then uh, we also had uh, on the House side, Mindy Dobb, who was my co-lead uh, sponsor of this legislation. This began as a late night crazy idea. Uh, I don't know if you all remember, but during the height of the pandemic, uh, many of us were very stressed. Uh, those of us were with, who are parents, we had grown used to trying to work with our kids sitting next to us, trying to connect with their teachers via Zoom. And I can tell you, as a legislator, I went from having a handful of unemployment cases a month to a handful every hour in some cases. And so it was really late one night uh, when I had, you know, caught up on my emails of the day. The unemployment office, the final person, had stopped working for the day. And I pivoted to my responsibilities as a den leader for my youngest Cub Scout group. And I was scrolling through the book, uh, admittedly growing anxious about yet another Zoom meeting with a young group of eight-year-olds. How was I going to keep them entertained after they were in school all day on Zoom? And I skipped to the back, and there was a segment on dinosaurs. And I thought, huh, I like dinosaurs. Maybe, maybe we can do something with that. Uh, so you know, one in the morning at this point, Googling, found out there were 12 states with state dinosaurs. 
remembered at that moment that as a legislator, I could file legislation to make a state dinosaur. Uh, so that next day, I reached out to leading paleontologists from across the Commonwealth, uh, asking, you know, did we not have any dinosaurs in Massachusetts? Why don't we have a state dinosaur? Uh, and every single one of them within hours got back with me with really long detailed emails about the dinosaurs we had discovered, what prehistoric life looked like in Massachusetts. Uh, and several of those paleontologists are with, with us today um, from Mount Holyoke College, uh, Dr. Mark McMenamin, Mark, perfect. Uh, many of these folks I've only met via Zoom and never said their last names aloud, uh, so please forgive me. Uh, from Amherst College, we have Dr. Fred Vinay. I think Fred just snuck in. He was caught in traffic, but he's actually brought one of the models uh, from uh, Western Mass, one of the original models of the Podokosaurus. Uh, and then from Tufts University, uh, Noel Heim. Noel, thank you so much for being here as well. Uh, so, as I was saying, overnight this idea emerged of what would it mean to create a state dinosaur here in the Commonwealth? And so I crafted a tweet that had I known it was gonna be picked up by CNN and Huffington Post and international press, I would have proofread, because uh, there were typos. Uh, but I tweeted out, like, we're working on this project, get excited, and immediately started getting back hundreds of emails uh, we put together a poll that I decided that if 200 kids participated in this poll between the two dino options, it would be a success. And I'd go to the speaker and Senate president and say, you know, 200 kids behind me, uh, we need to get this done. Uh, and within a couple days, 1,000 people had voted. Uh, within a couple more days, over 10,000. And by the end of it, 35,000 people had participated in this poll online from across the Commonwealth. I was getting emails from parents who were so excited because their kids were obsessed with dinosaurs uh, and they could talk about the legislative process. I got emails from teachers who, rightfully so, were sick of talking about the pandemic and social distancing and masks and hand sanitizer and instead could talk about something fun that everyone, at least most people, at one point in their life, you know, look at this thing, loved dinosaurs. Uh, but what I didn't expect was how much people needed something to talk about and to get excited about during the worst of that pandemic. Uh, the conversations that sparked after that, I could not have predicted. Uh, talk of Mignon Talbot, the professor out at Mount Holyoke, who was the first woman to find, discover, name, and describe a dinosaur, the Podokosaurus holyokensis, right here in Massachusetts. That's exciting. Uh, and this week, of course, we're talking about STEM, but paleontology is one of those fields, unfortunately, like many fields in science, where not enough women get into the field, not enough women are supported and inspired to get into the field. And so Mingden Talbot has gone from being a name talked about in paleontology circles to, in some cases, a household or classroom name. Uh, and hopefully, if this project inspires just a couple young girls to grow up and explore paleontology, uh, it would have been all worth it. Uh, I'll share a quick story. I was a couple weeks back was at the Natural History Museum in London because I like dinosaurs. Of course, I'm going to go see the dinosaurs. Uh, and there was a whole display about a woman being credited for discovering all of these marine mammals. And from a distance, it looked like she was getting credited for being the first woman to name and describe a dinosaur. Uh, and I was about to you know, ask for a manager or, or someone uh, to get it rectified. Uh, but as I got closer, I saw there was some clarifications and some disclaimer that uh, marine mammals or marine reptiles, yes, dinosaurs, no. But that's that's Mignon Talbot. Uh, but on the legislative front, in closing, I had reports from many colleagues and many parents that that first email they sent to their state rep and state senator may have been dinosaur related. It may have been uh, drafted by their young kid to make sure that their rep and senator signed on as a co-sponsor. Uh, but during the pandemic, many folks lost their jobs. Many folks lost their uh, health insurance relating to their employment. And people who had never turned to their state rep and state senator before had now reason to. And I, I kid you not, the number of cases of folks who maybe in October, December, the email was about dinosaurs, but unknown to them, that next March, they actually knew who their state rep was 
because they were connected to the dinosaur project. And instead of, unfortunately, which is the case, spending weeks trying to find the best person to contact, their state rep and senator were able to immediately connect them with mass health or, or unemployment insurance. And so while we're, we're celebrating STEM, we're celebrating the legislative process, uh, this project has connected dots with folks uh, that I think we can only begin to imagine uh, what it's gonna lead to. So again, I am so grateful to all of you for being involved in this project. Uh, the Museum of Science has been a partner from the beginning. Uh, at the beginning, I had one staffer, and I'm like, we have so much other things to work on. This can only be an hour of our week each week, but the Museum of Science stepped up. Uh, these wonderful paleontologists stepped up. I also want to thank uh, the museum trustee emeritus, uh, Mike Thonis, uh, for being here as well. Uh, but we've all come to see the governor and lieutenant governor sign this bill. Uh, it's already official. The Smithsonian Magazine already ran a, an article about it a couple months back. It is official. The Wikipedia page has been updated by somebody. But what we've been missing is the ceremonial bill signing. So I'd like to invite the governor and lieutenant governor, my colleagues in the legislature, uh, those leading paleontologists, uh, and the folks from the Museum of Science to join me up front uh, as we celebrate not the end, but the continuation of this project. Thank you.